Making a biodigester out of any container is as easy as I love you, the ASL sign. So we have the design that we need for building our biodigester right here in our hand from the tips of our fingers down to our elbows. Shortest finger, overflow or outlet. Tallest finger is gas and then the pinky finger, that is the feeding tube. And I'm going to show you how to measure. Looking at the inside of this digester, you can see that two of these tubes go all the way down to the bottom. So this one right here, the widest one that's three inches wide, is the feeding tube. And then this one is the overflow. And we measure these with our I love you sign, right? So the feeding tube, you drop this tube down into the tank before placing in the uniseal for measuring all the way down to the bottom and you're going to know where to cut it based on the distance from the elbow at the top of the tank to approximately the top of this tube. So from your elbow to the top of the pinky is approximately the height of the feeding tube. So we think of our thumb as being short and the overflow we want that to be as short as possible so i like to drop that tank that tube into the tank and i cut it just short enough right here so that i can have enough room to get this t on top of this two inch pipe and last over here is the gas line so that is the longest finger, which is the pointer. And I measure that from the top of the tank to the top of my finger right here, like that. So as long as my elbow goes from the bottom of the tube to where the end of the bushing is, then I know I have enough height for the gas line. So let's get started. Let's cut some half inch PVC for the gas line. I like the PVC lengths for the half inch to be approximately two and a half inches. So I like to just use my thumb as a measuring tool and I'll do one and two. So this is about two and a half right here. I'm gonna take my Sharpie and mark that so I can get ready to cut. These are PVC cutters. You need to use these with extreme care because they do have a hefty sharp blade. I'm going to unlock the safety and you open the blade by pressing on that button and I'm going to go ahead and cut. I put this all the way back against the blade and I crank this shut. A little bit of strength here is needed. And there's my piece and I lock my cutters again. I'm going to assemble the gas line. This right here is two inch PVC schedule 40. This is a two inch to one and a half inch adapter. And then right here on the top is one and a half inch to half inch bushing. Here is an adapter that will work. You don't have to use this exact setup. As long as you get down from like two inches to half inch, this is half inch slip. It's gonna go right in here. Um, I usually don't glue this until I have placed the biodigester because I want this gas line to swivel until I make the final decision about where I want this biodigester placed. And once I've made that choice, then I'm going to glue it. So for now, I'm not gluing anything just for the sake of demonstration. Here is a three and a half inch long piece of half inch PVC um, that goes here. And there's the half inch ball valve. And here's another half inch piece of PVC, half inch slip to half inch threaded. And right here is already the threaded uh, adapter from half inch male threaded to 3 8 inch barb. I already used threading tape on it and threaded this up previously. 
and then that goes in here. So this is the completed gas line. The last piece I put on the gas line is this two inch slip to two inch male threaded adapter. I would typically put threading tape on this before screwing this into the adapter, but this piece would get glued right here at the bottom. And this is the completed gas line. For my biodigester build, this is actually the most tricky and potentially um, dangerous part of my build in which I'm going to be handling these hole saws. So whenever I handle the hole saws, I always use um, protective gloves. These are a Kevlar uh, based product that is a fabric that washes easily and also it has nice grips on it too which is very handy for handling these sharp blades because as you can see they are a beast and put my gloves on anytime I'm going to be handling these blades because you can see how sharp these are I've seen these do a lot of damage to somebody's thumb at one point, um, you know, when it was not handled properly. And this is a four inch hole saw and it's meant to cut the hole for a three inch uniseal. So four inch hole saw to three inch uniseal. And this right here is a three inch hole saw and it is used for cutting a hole for a two inch uniseal. You can see how these line up. And what I'm going to do is show you how I like to get these drills ready with these bits. And so I, you know, get the drill all the way open and I had it in reverse. And I am very careful not to be touching the end of this bit. And I'm going to put it on forward and I'm holding this part right here waiting for it to catch there we go and so now my bit is on and it's secure and I am ready to drill when I'm done drilling I am going to put this drill back into reverse I'm gonna hold this low to the table I've got a good grip here and off comes my bit nice and safe so you're probably wondering how did I get such a nasty tear in my glove. It was actually not from this bit, but it is from this bit right here. So um, <laughs> if you are using a bit like this on this drill, it is actually not a good thing to be wearing these gloves because this can actually get caught in the glove, twist the fabric and cause a nasty cut. So these gloves are great for using hole saws, but not so great for using this type of a bit. This is the bottom of the feeding tube that I've cut. As you can see, it is almost like a 45 degree angle and then half of the tube is cut here. So it's sort of like a scoop. And the purpose of the scoop is that this is going to be resting on the bottom of the barrel or the tank to give it stability as well as having plenty of room for the food to be flowing out. So whenever I cut a piece of PVC that I'm going to be sliding through a uniseal, it is very important that I take the time to be feeling for any rough edges and I'm going to be sanding those edges down so that everything is nice and smooth. So the sanding process is really important because if I don't sand, this is what could happen to my uniseal. As you can see, this uniseal has tears in it and is sort of shredded and that is not good because then you are going to get a gas leak. So uh, once the pipe is nice and smooth, I am then going to use silicone on a good uniseal. <laughs> to do a nice thick bead around the outside of this uniseal that will then get popped into the tank um, that I had pre-cut a hole for.
My favorite drilling technique is to start with the drill forward first and I'm going to pull back on the trigger and I'm going to hold it here careful not to be blocking the vents and I'm going to get that pilot bit in. So the pilot goes in first and then it does tend to catch so I like to put it in reverse and just let it cruise its way through in reverse. So again, I'll show you, it's forward for getting this, the pilot bit in. I get that pilot bit in, and then I put it into reverse. The uniseals, once they are silicone, they pop in like this. They make a snapping sound. And again, nice flat surface. And then right here, flat surface. And that pops in too. So this sets up to explain what the three ports are here. So this right here, I always look on these barrels, which one has the finest threads. And the one of the finest threads is the one that I'm going to put the gas line through because this two inch thread here works very well to just screw in nice and flush here, nice and secure. And then closest to the gas is the overflow because I want to keep this as far away as possible from the feeding tube. And the feeding tube is always usually going to be this other port over here because there is already a hole in the tank. And so because there's already a penetration there, it just makes sense to drill through that hole and make a bigger hole. All right, so we have our three holes in our tank. We have the three inch pipe with the three inch uniseal for feeding, two inch uniseal with two inch pipe for overflow, and then we have our threaded that we're going to use for the gas. I'm going to put this feeding pipe down through this uniseal. So what I'm looking for is where the opening is. And what I want to do is mark at the top of this feeding tube where that opening is so I can remember later because I want the opening of the feeding tube to be paced, face towards the inside of this tank. So it's going to face in like that. So the food's going to be flowing into the digester and not get clumped along the wall of the biodigester. It is very helpful when sliding plastic PVC through this rubber uniseal because it does tend to stick is to use a lubricant and that is rubbing alcohol. Okay, so I just simply apply it on here. Get it open. So I want to get the rubbing alcohol all on the inside of the uniseal and right along where this edge is because this right here is where it's going to get caught. And I like to be on a stepping stool so that, you know, at least I am like above waist height from the tank so that I can get some more motion going. And it also helps me to get a little higher so I can put my knee on it. And to pop this thing through, you do need to stir it because if you push straight down, there is a good possibility that you can actually pop the uniseal through the hole, which is what we don't want to do. Absolutely. We're still turning. Oh, you can't talk. We're still turning and pushing and working our way past that little lip I was talking about. Okay, I made some more progress. I've got this through the uniseal, and this right here is facing towards the middle of the biodigester. I'm going to apply some more rubbing alcohol, more lubricant, and I'm gonna work on pushing this through. This one's a little tricky because obviously this is a cutaway biodigester for demonstration, so this is caving a little bit, but I just really wanted you to see like how this pushing and turning action like helps to get the tube through and we got it in so the tube goes all the way to the bottom and there is the scoop and that is facing to the inside of the tank
with any domed biodigester that I make that is made out of a uh, containers such as this barrel, an IBC tank, or even a septic tank, I always like to add surface area to the inside. And the reason why is this one fault of the design, which is that you have the feeding tube right here, and the feeding tube is facing out to the inside of the tank. And then right over here, this is the overflow where the finished fertilizer comes out. Now you can see there's a hole right here in the middle of this tube and I always have this facing to the outside of the tank because I'm, what I'm trying to do is to create as much space as possible between the raw materials that come in here and then the finished fertilizer which is going to come out here and so uh, I compensate by adding the surface area so this could be like gravel or you could have a laundry bag with little um, bottle caps in it with a weight to kind of keep it in the midsection because unlike the plug and flow systems in which it's like a big tube and it's traveling through the tube over time everything in here sort of has more opportunity for getting mixed together so you want to create more homes for your microbes so that you can digest more efficiently when building the biodigester I always want to put my surface area in first before I put in my pipes because you're putting them in through these holes that are either three inches or four inches so obviously the four inch hole is ideal and that's the one the feeding pipe goes in you can't put the gravel through if the feeding pipe is already in and once you get the gravel in you're going to uh, swirl the tank around to kind of spread it out and then um, you know it's a good time to add the manure for these little barrel biodigesters because you can pour it through uh, one of these holes that you still have open where you don't have a tube and you're going to put in what I like is this is pretend one full bucket of wet manure into this biodigester in order to inoculate it there there you go now that my biodigester is inoculated with manure, I put in the overflow pipe right here, which you can see the hole for the overflow, making sure that that hole is facing the outside wall of the biodigester. And sometimes it's tricky to get this all the way down to the bottom because you do have manure here in the tank as well as the gravel. And so giving it a little shake helps to get it into place. Now that I got the feeding tube in, I have put in the overflow. I had marked it right here so I could see where the hole was because I want this tube facing towards the outside. And then I have my T. I always use a T because the top of the T is open which will prevent a bell siphon from happening um, if there was gas to build up and pressure on the inside of this tank. So I put on the T and then I have some more two inch pipe with an elbow so that as the digester is fed, it is equal in and equal out, coming out through the overflow. And this threaded two inch adapter with slip. This is for our gas line that we built and that goes on here. This does get glued. So with the gas line, what's important is that the top of the gas line right here, I don't glue that until I am finished because I always want that to be in the direction of where I am going to be using the stove.